Joining our conversation, Jeff Gardier, clinical psychologist and adjunct clinical professor at Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, talk to me about why it's taken so long to have this conversation. I regret not doing it sooner, but talk to me about how people are doing and what they need to get through this final and perhaps darkest phase of the pandemic. Sure, Nicole. Uh, first of all, uh, great to be on with you. Look, here's what's going on. With any medical emergency, the first thing that we do is we stop the bleeding. We look at what the physical toll is, and then we get uh, the patient to stabilize. Uh, and that's what we've done with COVID-19. But what we have not yet done, and we're starting to do it now, we're seeing it with the stimulus package, uh, giving $4.2.5 billion uh, towards mental health and substance use disorders. We're looking at the tsunami of mental illness that comes from COVID-19. We haven't been paying attention the way that we uh, ha uh, had to, but we're paying attention now because we see the toll, not just on adults, but as you mentioned earlier, on children, young children and teenagers with the unprecedented numbers of visits uh, to emergency rooms uh, because of anxiety attacks, because of anxiety, because of depression. What are the warning signs? Sometimes these are hard conversations to have, but what should we look out for in our kids first? Well, here's the thing, right? Uh, we always uh, think of our kids as being resilient. And whenever we ask them, is there something going on? They're like, oh, everything is fine. And they've done that through COVID. But what we've seen is being separated from school, not having graduations, not being able to go to homecomings has taken a devastating toll on their psyche. So now we find them isolating. Uh, we find that they're crying more often. As I talked about, they're having a lot of these anxiety attacks. If they had a pre existing existing history of depression. We're seeing that um, they are isolating themselves much, much more. And here's the thing, Nicole, they're not really talking about it. Uh, they're manifesting it more uh, psychosomatically. So what is what are the practical things that people can do? Uh, well, there's a lot we can do, and we know that they're proven. We have to eat better. We have to sleep better. We have to maintain our social connections, even if it's online, that's all we have. Uh, we have to uh, get a, a discipline and a schedule for ourselves, stay busy, spend time um, as much as possible with social distancing in the sun, especially with people with seasonal affective disorder. And that's a real big problem now. But for the younger kids, more than anything else, we have to stop ignoring them as we often do because we don't understand them. We think that they're doing it on their own and in fact, they're not. So that means more family time, staying more connected through listening and talking, tasks, games, hobbies, um, doing more things around the house with them, celebrating with them more. And in the academic setting, we as professors and teachers, we have to now talk to these young people as to what it is that they're experiencing emotionally because of COVID and not just teaching them about reading, writing and arithmetic because this is a mental health crisis. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.